You are listening to the Gospel-Centered Education Podcast, brought to you by Community Christian School in Tallahassee, Florida. Hello, and welcome to the Gospel-Centered Education Podcast. I'm your host, Tom Argersinger. My co-host, Kelly Allen, could not be here today, but we do have two outstanding guests today. We are so excited to have two guests on the podcast today. We have Mrs. Kim Johnson and Mrs. Hannah Osterby. So welcome you guys to the Gospel Thank Centered you. Education Thank Podcast. You for having us. Glad to have you guys here. And so um, we're going to start, I think, maybe with Kim with you. And so Kim, uh, Kim serves as our Alumni Relations Coordinator. She also works with our website. But Kim, if maybe you could give us a little bit of background on, on your, a uh, little bit of uh, idea of what your background is. Okay. Um, so I have been married for almost 18 years right. um, to Jason, who is a CCS alum. Uh-huh. Um, I have five children who all attend CCS, so our ties to CCS are <laughs> very deep. Um, I went to Florida State and I got my bachelor's degree in exercise science. Okay. And then I also got a bachelor's degree in nursing. Nice. Um, I worked in the legislature for a little bit, um, and then went to nursing, and then back to the legislature. So, see, I didn't know about the, I didn't know about a few of those things, but I didn't know about the exercise science. I feel like we should have a whole podcast on like <laughs> exercise, yeah, and kind of get with Anna Nelson, you know, uh, our on staff RN, and, and just talk about how we should stay in shape. I mean, that'll that'll be interesting and, and probably good. So, we've had a very background. I have, I so have. What's been your favorite thing that you've done so far? Um, I really loved working as a labor and delivery nurse, Mm. um, just being able to be bedside with women as they go through this big milestone in their lives Mm -hmm. and everyone is genuine, genuinely happy to be there, Mm. you know? Um, so that was really fun. And then, um, working in the house majority office. Yeah. was a big learning experience. Yeah, I bet you that was a very yeah. interesting experience. It was. I, I've just done a little bit of advocacy work with, with, for Christian education over yeah. the years up in New York City and then down here. And it's, it's interesting as you begin to, quote, see the sausage being made a little yes. bit. Did yes. you find that part interesting? Very, very. It was very fast paced um, mm-hmm. and just really cool to see how the inner workings. Yeah, yeah, that's work. great. Well, that's that's super. So, so you you have kind of taken over the alumni relations director yes. role this year, mm-hmm. and it's one of those things that I know in the history of CCS that's been something we've said over and over again. It's like for like twenty years, it's like we really need to get this happening, really yeah. need to get this working, and we've kind of had fits <laughs> and starts, and some folks have done some good work on it, but it never really has gelled together. So, so maybe you can talk to us a little bit about what you're going to be doing or what you are doing as far as, you know, what your vision is for the Alumni Relations Department? Sure. Um, so we launched our Alumni Relations Program this month. Mm, yay. Um, so we're very excited about that. And uh, right now we're in phase one of the two phases mm-hmm. of the program. Um, and we'll be here for the next one or two years. Mm-hmm. So in phase one, Um, we are going to focus on building community Mm -hmm. and so we just need to find our people, Ah, you know, ah, um, and one way we're doing that is through our alumni page on the CCS website. And, um, if you go there, there'll be a short form to fill out and, um, we would love for alumni to go visit that and fill that out so we can collect, um, contact information, um, so that we can reach out to them for future communications and yeah, events absolutely. and all of That's that. Good, yeah. um, also on the alumni page, we will have an alumni feature every month. Nice. And um, that's just a really great way to kind of highlight, yes, spotlight, spotlight um, yeah. our alumni. Yeah, that's very good. So, okay, so I have a question for both of you guys. Yes. So I wonder how many students First of all, how many students CCS, it, like individual unique students, CCS has had its entire 46 year history. Mm-hmm. And then I wonder how many graduates there are for uh, of CCS total. Like we can go back and calculate numbers. How many do you, how, Hannah, how many do you think we have? Like oh. as far as unique students, just give me a guess. 
We're going to fact check this and we're going to see what happens I'm later. I'm so bad. You probably <laughs> asked me the worst possible question you could have. I am so bad. Like, how many students do I think have gone through Gone through CCS? the program at some point, yeah. It's got to be a lot, right? How many are in the school right now? 403. 403 kids. Okay, so Kim, how many do you think? All right, here we go. We're tossing oh, it goodness. back to the alumni Well, I know it was, the classes were smaller at the beginning. For sure. Yeah, Ooh, yeah, so. yeah. So I, we got to figure that out because yeah. I think that would be a fascinating <laughs> yeah, I feel thing. Like it's got I have it's, no it's got to be like a thousand at, at least, least at, right? At, at least, yeah. Okay, so what's a low low ball estimate? So what do you think? You obviously have I feel like maybe even sixteen hundred. Oh, or... okay. All right. All right. Well, You're we're gonna we're gonna get on that. Question. We're gonna figure that out because I've always we wondered exa- what that exact number is, and it's got to be quite a few. And you know. I have to, as I talk about it, I've got to stop for a second and just really, really thank the Lord for that opportunity. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, what an amazing opportunity the Community Christian School has had over these last 46 years. And as we look forward to our 50th anniversary and what that's going to be like in 27 and 28, I mean, there's just, it's a very humbling thing. Mm-hmm. And it's also a lot to give thanks for that we've had this amazing opportunity to have a, a place of some sort in a lot of lives. Mm-hmm. And so just all glory to him um, for that thing. So, so, uh, so Kim, anything else you wanted to share about kind of, I know you kind of summarized it there, or Hannah, any input that you might have or any questions you might have for, for uh, Kim just about how this is going to work? Well, I know, I know that I'm the alumni feature for this. Yes. Is it weekly or monthly? Or monthly. monthly. So okay. starting tomorrow, you will be up Okay, there. which is very exciting. <laughs> um, <laughs> is that alumni feature only on the website or it's on Facebook or it's where does that live exactly? Good question. Um, so right now it is on the website and in our parent news that okay. we send out weekly. Okay. Um, but we could possibly put it on our social media pages just a thought yeah Yeah, i mean what do you think what do you think would be a good way to reach out to alumni in an effective way yeah i mean i think like alumni i mean of course we have alumni that have students in the school which is really cool so they'll be able to access that parent news but i would say the majority of alumni aren't going to be accessing that that's true um and probably aren't going to be actively going on to our website Mm -hmm. so i think having it somewhere on the social media where it's more of a shared space might be helpful even just not having to have the whole thing but even just a alumni feature here's the link with a little bit of what it is um, might attract people that aren't going to be in those spaces like parent news and like the website I would idea. Say. Yeah, good idea very good yeah thank you you really know what you're doing here i mean well i am an alumni so i feel very qualified <laughs> there you go well since we're, since we're kind of transitioning here so let's complete the transition okay so hannah tell us a little bit about yourself a little bit of your background and kind of some of the things that you're focusing on right now sure so i went here from preschool to graduation mm-hmm. and i graduated in 2017 and i went to a couple colleges because i was moving around but i ended up with a bachelor's degree in english okay. with a minor in creative writing from unf um, and I'm married to Kevin Osterby, mm-hmm. whom I met in preschool All right. here, Mrs. Ryer's class. Um, so we reconnected a little later and obviously, uh, reconnected <laughs> a little later and got married in 2020. We have two cats that are okay. very beloved. And what um, are the cats names again? Midnight is 18 years old. Ramsey after Gordon Ramsey himself is two years old 18 years old. Yep. I got him when I was six years old for Christmas Yeah, wow. and he Sorry, he's sometimes even hard for me to talk about because I feel so attached to him. A lot of connection, right? (laughs) Yes, but yeah. A lot of years. Yeah, so we were in Jacksonville for a while. I moved moved out of Tallahassee when I was 18 Mm -hmm. and lived in Texas for a little bit in Jacksonville. And then we just moved back this December. Mm -hmm. So with that move, I've kind of reintegrated into CCS, which just felt very natural for Mm -hmm. me. In a more professional Um, In a more professional space, um, subbing, and I'm kind of a director in Latour right now, which Mm -hmm. is our multi-arts ensemble that I was Mm -hmm. in since its conception. So that feels very fun. I mean, it all feels very full circle, and I think it could have been weird, but it's just so not, and it's Mm -hmm. been so gratifying, and, you know, maybe 
I would use the term surreal, I think, to just yeah. be making this drive and walking in the same places that I grew up in. And It's interesting because I feel kind of the same way about having come back to mm -hmm. CCS, you know, after being gone for five or six years. And it, there is a sense in which it's, it, it could have been weird, mm -hmm. but it really hasn't been that weird, at least to me. And maybe it is for other people, but it hasn't been that weird for me. Mm -hmm. uh, and it has been a little bit surreal at times because there's so many memories in these halls. You yes. know, everywhere you walk, you've got these memories of, of people like you. Because mm -hmm. you are my my daughter. We should have yeah, full disclosure. Yeah, we should disclosure. probably say that. Probably should say that. <laughs> and now yeah. people probably can tell. Yeah. Because we look so similar. Yeah. Yes, but you are mine. So yeah. it's, it's, it's neat. So it's neat that kind of God's bringing you back around. So yeah. I, I'd like to hear a little bit more about your work with Latour because I know that's a pretty special yes. ensemble that's unique in a lot of ways. So maybe you can kind of tell the listeners a little bit about that. Yes. Yeah. So Latour is a multi-arts ensemble that you started. Um, and when you started it, I was in it. I don't, can't remember exactly what grade I was in, but I was there since it started. And it was really all about and is about bridging this gap between CCS or maybe the Christian, you know, what we're doing as Christians and believers and bridging the gap to people who maybe aren't in that space. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, we want to make it the best quality we can for everyone, mm -hmm. but particularly going out into the community and trying to reach out to those people who, mm -hmm. um, who maybe aren't going to come into our space yeah. as easily. Yep, yep. So it's, I love it. It's just, it's something after my own heart. So it's been very fun to come back to it. Um, and I work with Alex Garange, who's my, or Allie, she goes by now. And her last name is is no, love. love yes, yes. Sorry. okay so she's been with me also since preschool so um <clears throat> yeah so Allie and i are in that together which is fun just as a classmate of mine my whole life we're so close and mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. it's just been really neat um to just see how it's developed and i think the the idea that we don't do all Christian music and we mm -hmm. have some secular mm -hmm. things in there, some secular songs, of course, nothing you know, right. weird, but not all Christian pieces. Mm -hmm. It makes that bridge um, so that we can relate to people yeah. or invite people. Let me just, I wrote down something that I feel like I need to reference. Okay. Not doing all Christian music opens doors to invite non-believers into a space where we can in turn show Christ's love. Yeah, amen. Yeah. As I recall, the I think the tagline is still the same: artists starting conversations mm -hmm. about Jesus. Absolutely. Yeah. Starting conversations, and mm -hmm. um, that's so important. And I think the fact that it's varied mediums, mm -hmm. so you have mm -hmm. singing and acting and dancing and spoken word, and I think that just adds a layer of um, kind of everybody can yeah can get it. You know, if yeah. you're not into the whole acting thing, maybe you're a writer. And if you're not a writer, maybe you're a dancer and mm -hmm. kind of having something for everyone and also being able to convey the message in a varied format, I think mm -hmm. is a really useful tool. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Very good. So, okay. So you mentioned Allie Scaringe Love. Is that is Scaringe your middle name or is she have a I don't know what she did. All right. So Allie Love, did. we know that. Allie much. Love, we know. Okay. Which we tried to get on the podcast this morning, but she yes. wasn't able to do it because of her job. Right. She works in radio. She works in radio. Mm -hmm. If you listen to Hot 104.9 or the 1031, the Wolf. Okay. 1031, which I don't because it's country, <laughs> but she's on both of those. Um, and she's fabulous. You know, she's just and, so. And you guys amazing. have restarted a yes. podcast, which is amazing. So yes. tell us a little bit about Broken Tip Jar. Season two of Broken Tip Jar has begun. And when I lived in Texas and Alex lived here in 2020, she, we had always, since high school, we were like, oh man, we got to do something. We have to, we were always in theater together, always on the tour together. And I don't know, we just had this inkling that we needed to do something like a podcast. So in 2022, I wasn't working, but I was in school. Anyways, it just, we just decided like, we need to just bite the bullet and do it. So we did it over Zoom um, and we had our mics and we put it on Spotify and it was so therapeutic and cathartic and just so great to reconnect with her. Um, and when I moved back, we were, so anyways, sorry, we had to stop season one because I was moving and mm -hmm. life just got crazy on, yeah. and we just had to like kind of take a break. So then when I moved back here, we were like, we need to start this up again. So we're just doing it now in my apartment um, and my husband's helping set up and everything like that. And it's been great. So we released our first episode last week, mm -hmm. which is kind of our where are they now episode. Mm -hmm. We just recorded our next episode and that'll come out on Monday. 
So, so where are some of the things that you guys talk about in your, what's the focus of the podcast? Well, we start with pop culture. Mm. We are both very into pop culture, um, celebrities and award shows and TV shows. And that's just something we've both always loved and been mm -hmm. passionate about. Mm -hmm. And it kind of adds like a brightness and lightness. Sure. Um, and maybe draws people in, um, <clears throat> in a certain way too. So we start with our pop talk is what we call it now. And after that, we move into, um, whatever the subject's going to be. And before we were doing big ticket topics like anxiety, joy, money, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and we kind of realized that, A, I don't think it's sustainable, and B, we really wanted to focus on what was going on in our lives at the present moment. Mm -hmm. So we kind of just say, what's going on in our lives this week? And that morphs into a, a topic. So this next topic is going to be about love languages mm. um, and kind of like our experience with that in marriage and Very good. things like that. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's great because you guys, I think, are great at that. I think Thank it's you. a great podcast. I really encourage all of our listeners to, to take a listen to yes. it. We're gonna, we'll are gonna we try to put the link in the show notes along with our, our website for alumni as love well. Love it. Perfect. So that'll be good. But uh, I love it because you and Allie, first of all, I know, obviously know you both really well. Mm -hmm. And you're different people. Yes. So talk a little bit about how that We're that very like. different. I feel like Alex is so exciting and bright <laughs> and fun and just kind of loud and funny and I feel like I'm a little more um somber is not the right word <laughs> but I'm very emotional and I like to talk about like really deep things mm -hmm. and um even we had an instance on this most recent podcast we recorded where we were on like very different ends of the spectrum on this topic and I just think it's great because I think it broadens our audience of yeah. you know people are going to relate to what I'm saying and kind of my feelings on it and they'll yeah. relate to her and yeah. you know we kind of feel yin and yang in that way yeah yeah and the thing I love about this conversation Kim is it reminds me that as we you know essentially walk these young people through their journeys through CCS that they're very they're all very different mm -hmm. i mean they're 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 the same in certain ways because they're human beings etc mm -hmm. they have the same needs and, and basic desires and everything the same need for christ but the way they're wired is is very different and they mm -hmm. end up in very very different places and i personally i think it's really cool when alumni get together and do stuff it's like when my own kids get together and do stuff it's kind of cool yes. you yeah know? and so it's been fun watching you guys uh watching you guys do that yeah it's fun as an as just an alumni and i'm actually getting lunch this weekend with two other of our friends that were in our class so that's four alumni coming together and yeah. one of which has a young baby and one of which is pregnant and so you know we're all in very different walks of life and it's yep. so fun i mean we all every time i get together we're like we're not 17. i mean i think in a way we still feel very young it's just crazy to watch you know we've been in each other's weddings and we've been you know met each other's kids and it's it's very odd but it's fabulous yeah yeah and so for me it's like i'm not 57 yeah it's like oh my gosh what <laughs> happened so so kim i don't know if you had maybe you had a question or something for to ask uh, hannah and before we unpack a couple other things um so no questions but mm -hmm. really i i think we would love to be part of getting our alumni back together sure mm -hmm. um and reconnecting and mm -hmm. just giving them opportunities mm -hmm. to reach out to each other yes so how cool i think that would be great that. i think mm -hmm. it would i think it would be totally great you know people's numbers change yeah. and they're mm -hmm. you know maybe i don't have their contact anymore but i'm definitely thinking about exactly. them so i feel like mm -hmm. a, a way for all of us to be able to kind of connect and whether that's an event or whether that's over the internet or whatever is really cool and i would love to do that i'd love for us to also to be able to maybe collect prayer requests <laughs> you know mm -hmm. just have a you know a prayer wall or something that's on digital online that we could for the ones they felt comfortable sharing, you know, mm -hmm. that we would be able to continue to pray for them because we really do love them and we love you guys and we want to continue to pray for you guys and, and basically be your cheerleaders and champions right? as you go on. Because it's, it's not an easy world. We talk about that a lot on our regular podcast we have here. It's a challenging, broken world. And right. so, and I think one of the things I, I know we want to get into today is kind of along those lines and that is we're working really hard at CCS and of course homes like Kim's home, our home, you know, pe parents who are Christians are working really hard and the churches are working hard, school is working hard to help mm -hmm. prepare young people to actually flourish and function in, in what really is a difficult, challenging world. So maybe you can talk a little bit about, you know, kind of how that preparation 
helped you um, get ready. And then some areas where it was maybe a little weaker and we need to do a better job. Either way. Sure. I would love to. Mm -hmm. But I would love to say to you, I just had a little brain drizzle. Um, I think it would be so fun to have an alumni event that is like gone. For example, spring fling, it doesn't exist anymore. So I feel like having an alumni spring fling, like something that would Uh, kind of like ring in their ears. you had when you were in school, but we no longer do. But you don't have anymore, you know, but but have it be for alumni because they'll know what it is. Yeah. You know, I just think that'd be fun. Yeah, that's a great idea. Anyways, but yes, on to your question. Yes. Yeah, I think... I mean, it's no joke going to secular colleges and often being in the vast, maybe not vast isn't the right word, but the minority for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, It's very daunting. I think in a lot of ways it's very disorienting. Um, And if you don't have a great support system, um, and I was just saying the other day, having my classmates um, as that a portion of my friend's support system mm-hmm. has been very necessary. Mm-hmm. Um, but also your parents and, you know, people in the church are, you need a support system mm-hmm. and also um, like a sounding board mm-hmm. to be able to take these things that you are going to hear and observe. Um, there's been, there had been times when I was in college where I was given material that I was going to be tested on that I did not feel comfortable mm-hmm. reading. And and so coming to these questions of what's my, what am I valuing here? You know, am I Mm -hmm. valuing, valuing the grade? Am I valuing a moral obligation I feel to not intake this? Mm -hmm. And those are really hard questions. They are. And I think people need to be open and available for their college aged kids to come to them and, and not have a sweeping like oh of course you shouldn't read that or you know right whatever that answer may be because the answer is not that easy in the it's real not, world right. it's not like a zero is important in college right right, right. you can't just say you don't have many grades during the semester, right you don't have right. many grades um so navigating questions like that was it was definitely hard mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. but i would say when i was in school using the arts for me personally um, things like Latour, where we were talking about hard concepts already, mm-hmm. talking about how we were wanting to reach non-believers yeah. um, and kind of bridge that gap, um, I think was helpful for me to start mm-hmm. having conversations, start having um, dialogue about what that looks like, yes. what, are, what are my pillars in my own life, right. um, things like that. And then also we had classes like philosophy and ethics Um, and even some English classes talking about some book themes or Mm -hmm. whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, am just going to read what I had written here, learning how to navigate what the world would throw at me after high school while in high school was one of the biggest aids in my journey into adulthood. So having those convert, having those conversations, you know, in this philosophy and ethics class, we would sit in a circle, we'd all be, you know, looking at each other. And we would just have hard conversations and someone could throw out a topic that was like, whoa, you know, that's a big topic, yes. whatever, yeah, whatever sure. it was. And it'd be like, no, like, let's flush this out. Let's talk about it. Let's mm-hmm. not just like dismiss mm-hmm. this. Like, mm, you'll figure that out later. Or you'll, mm-hmm. cause I think mm-hmm. high schoolers want to know how to figure it out. Right. You know, maybe they don't say that explicitly, but I think in the back of their head, a lot of them are like, how do I talk about gender how do i talk about whatever it may be Mm -hmm. um but sometimes the safe space and that you know taking that seriously isn't maybe always there but i think it was there here yeah yeah i praise god for that i think it's also i could be wrong but i think it's sometimes hard for parents Mm -hmm. to know how to do that because there's so much emotional investment obviously Mm -hmm. i'm going to ask you in a second kim just how in your family how this works but um, there's so much emotional investment. You're so invested in having this kid succeed, you know? Right. Uh, and sometimes parents don't feel equipped, I don't think, mm-hmm. to actually have those kind of conversations. And that makes it less likely to happen in a sense. Plus everybody's busy and they're just mm-hmm. logistics. Kim, what do you, what, what's your take on that? So I think the, the resources that we've kind of used is just having people around us that mm-hmm. have been through things Mm -hmm. that we're going through Mm -hmm. um, and have come out on the other side and can tell us kind of like Mm -hmm. what 
what they did. This was the journey. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. been the biggest and I think, one. I think some people, because I do this myself with certain things, but I think some people equate questioning to like acceptance. Like yes. if you're even yes. questioning this topic or whatever, something's gone wrong. You know, like or I rejection. Think, I guess. Yeah, if you or rejection. You're automatically rejecting. Like there's because right. this again, this is sometimes how I can be, but there's like this alarm that goes off if mm-hmm. someone questions something that I think. You know, I feel very strongly about in one direction or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I think as parents, just from a child's perspective, that's scary. Mm-hmm. Like if, yes. if, if I come to you with a question and I can tell, because kids are very perceptive, I can tell that you are like, wee, wee, you know, <laughs> I would be like, you know what? Never mind. Mm-hmm. You know, and I wouldn't go deeper with that mm-hmm. conversation, even though I want to. Yes. And I want to flesh it out. Yeah. And then, unfortunately, if that happens, I think sometimes... You go internal and you learn that I'm just going to try to figure this one out on my own. Yeah. And then when you get into a college space and you have all of these inputs and you don't really feel like you have a place to soundboard it, then you're just stuck with yourself. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's like one of the things we say a lot around here is we want to help young people, uh, these sacred agents in the real mm-hmm. world, you know, sacred as a, in the sense of set apart agents as kind of in the sense of as an emissary for another, in this case, Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so, but being that sacred agent, it's great when you can stand together for what's true and what's right. But there are some times when you've got to stand alone. Absolutely. And that becomes, I think we're, because, and I think as parents, we want to believe we will always have that network. It's super important. We're going to do what we can as a school to foster that kind of a network. But at the end of the day, sometimes you got to stand up and do what you need to do in that yes. moment. So yeah, have you experienced that at all in your, your I have. Setting? I have experienced that. And I, I'll go into that example, but I will say beforehand, there is times where you are the only person in your class, and you can tell, <laughs> you're the only person in your class that has the stance that you have. Has a faith and perspective. Have a fa- really. Has a faith perspective, has the moral pillars that you do, and what things that we learned in high school um, about being able to identify um, different belief systems, different um, worldviews and cynicism and, you know, red herrings and all of these things, learning what those were and being able to identify them, I think is what made it possible for me to go through and say, you know, something in my ear said, Hmm, that doesn't sound right to me Mm -hmm. or something you know in that is not exactly correct or whatever Mm -hmm. not in not in a right and wrong sense but in a you know in a sense of like i see what they're saying to me and how they believe it with all their heart Mm -hmm. but that does not align with me and i can tell and it and it just because we feel it in our hearts doesn't always mean it's true true right because we can feel a lot of things really strongly have a deep conviction almost to the point we would die for that idea, mm-hmm. but yet in the end it may not actually be true, which takes us back to the word and our standards and all that, yeah. Yeah, so my example, so people it can be very convincing. Yes. And my example is that my, um, I was a creative writing minor, and so my last poetry workshop I took in college, um, it's basically, I mean, he would give out prompts, but you're writing about whatever the heck you wanna write about. Right. And everyone in that class was fantastic Mm -hmm. there was no one that was like mediocre i mean Mm -hmm. everyone was fabulous so so we would go up to present in front of the class and this one particular day this girl goes up and she her poems behind her and she's reading it and everyone is like falling out of their seat like they are like this is the best poem i've ever heard and it was fabulous Mm. and the content was so wrong Mm. and it was all about and it was amazing in this class i just realized how much god is in the classroom Mm -hmm. but typically it's not positive Mm. but it's like it's like we have to talk about him it's crazy it's just like yeah we need to talk about him and he's there and so her whole poem was about um eve and adam and the snake and intimacy with the snake and just and i was sitting there sweat drew me down my back and I was like this is awful and Mm. everyone's falling out of their seats like like, this is the best thing ever yeah this is the best thing ever and I just felt like my head was on fire (laughs) and I was like this is borderline heretical and it was it broke my heart Mm. to see the response 
and Mm -hmm. everyone else, including the professor. Mm -hmm. So I remember I called you and I said, again, sounding board. And I said, I have a poem that has Jesus in it or the Lord in it in a positive light. It was about a dark time in Texas. um, And it was about this night that I felt like the Lord was like sitting next to me. And we were Mm -hmm. having this very intimate, um, just not discussion, but he was just there with me. Mm -hmm. And so I wrote a poem about it for this class. And I was like, how am I supposed to go up there and give this wildly different perspective on the Lord and, and present him as this gentle, comforting, you know, Mm -hmm. being in sure when everyone else is like so jazzed about Satan, (laughs) you know, it's just, (laughs) you're just like, how am I supposed to do that? Like my knees are just wobbling, you know, and, and how am I supposed to, um, rectify the fact that that was a great poem she wrote, right? But it was so wrong, right? And you run into that a lot. Mm -hmm. People do great things that are so wrong. And what do I mm-hmm. do with that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I, you know, this is such a great story. And I, I think this is a great story, partially because it's, it's so true and partially because it's not isolated. Mm-hmm. This is very common, especially mm-hmm. today. It's not that God is necessarily absent from conversations, although that's what a lot of people think. A lot of right. Christians are like, well, nobody, nobody ever talks about God. Well, that is true sometimes in certain mm-hmm. places, but often he is talked about but it's not the God of the Bible no. or it's not true or it's not accurate based on. And of course, maybe some of our listeners are going, well, Tom, how do you know that it's maybe what they're saying really is true? Again, it goes back to what you've been saying. There has to be a, a third party standard that mm-hmm. validates the truth. And in our case, it's the word of God. That's what validates. what. That's how I can sit here and go, well, or, the, or, or how you could say, well, that's wrong. You know, there, there's, there wasn't that kind of intimacy between Adam and Eve and the snake or whatever. Right. That's not the story. That's not the true story. And we can rely on the word as being true. Right. And I, at the end of the day, I decided I had a moral obligation. This was my bridge. And it, it was hard mm-hmm. and it was confusing. But this was my bridge. And I needed to get up there at the end of the day and speak my testimony and my truth. Whether anyone got it or responded to it, Mm. that wasn't up to me. That's good. But I had to do what I felt like was right and to share my testimony in that way. But I just wanted to say to what you just said, I think it would be way easier if they didn't talk about God. Yeah. The fact that he's in there and you're like kind of hearing half truths and like, is that what it said? I don't mm-hmm. really. The fact right. that you're having to decode all the time and go back to what is true. If he just wasn't talked about at all and you had your knowledge of what was true and everybody else you knew kind of wasn't on that page, I think it'd be way easier. But the mm-hmm. fact that you're constantly having to be like, oh, you're talking about him. I, oh, I don't think that's actually what it says. Yeah. It just, it's, it can be exhausting. It's kind of like the wolves and she, wolf and sheep clothing idea. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Satan does, uh, you know, kind of uh, cover himself and present himself as if it's almost like an angel of light. So it's presenting yes. as true, but it really, it's either half true or a third true or maybe not even true at all. And so discernment then becomes mm-hmm. really, really important. Yeah, I think discernment is hugely important. And unfortunately, the authorities in that classroom, people right. that we've learned to respect, and yeah. you should respect everyone, but to maybe take what they're saying as truth, right. or if you don't really they're know. they're experts. Right, because they're experts. Professors, the majority of the professors that I experienced at, again, three different colleges, they said whatever the heck they wanted to. Mm-hmm. They were extremely biased out of their own experiences. They made it very clear what their views were Mm -hmm. and so i couldn't take what they were saying and and make that truth you know so the idea that there there are valueless education so this is Mm -hmm. one of my 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 soapboxes right i mean that people try to convince you that in certain settings or in all settings in a sense except for christian organizations in public settings or secular settings there's no bias Mm -hmm. it's all just completely neutral and that's just hoo-ha that's just not true because no. we were talking before we came on here today. Everyone comes to situations with bias. Right. But people that are intelligent and honest, intellectually honest, will admit that mm-hmm. and then work to overcome at least a portion of that bias. I don't think we can ever, I don't think we even know 
all of our biases. I think there's things that are intrinsic mm-hmm. to us that we don't even endemic, we don't even get. But the ones we are aware of, we can work to overcome those as a, as a relatively smart person and a well-read person. And then we can at least, if nothing else, we can admit it. And yeah. that's the problem I have with a lot of these settings where there's such a strong bias, but it's not openly, uh, it's kind of presented as, well, I'm really being neutral. It's like, no. It's right. completely, you're, you're just vocalizing the cultural zeitgeist and the cultural narratives, you know, in that way. So that's, sorry, that's my soapbox, you know, of saying at least just be honest. Yeah. yeah. Be honest about where you are and, and be honest about the fact that you have as much bias as I do. It's just mm-hmm. in a different direction. And then the conversation is going to turn around to, well, who's right? Mm-hmm. Are we both right? Is everyone right? And that mm-hmm. whole, the whole postmodernism thing. And then again, I'm going to go back to, well, what's your standard? On what basis do you make that claim? So, right. yeah, and it's hard. It's hard to be a student in that situation. It is hard. And I just want to say to parents that probably are listening to my experience and saying like, well, that's off the table, you know, like yeah, yeah. I didn't go to a Christian university. And so I know that there's probably a ton of pros about that. But I think that we grow so much in the uncomfortable. And this is why it's so important to have that experience in high school of kind of building this foundation. So by the time you get into college, if you go to a secular college and you're confronted with these things, you're not going to falter with the Lord, with your sounding board of, of parents and friends and whoever that may be. It's going to be hard. It's going to be uncomfortable. But I felt like I could go into that classroom and make an impact. And, and I had friends that were very different than me, that I knew had very different views than me. But hey, we had to swap papers and I had to be in a group with them for three classes in a row. And that was really important. And yeah. I feel like I mm-hmm. got to... And good. I, and good. I yeah. didn't have to say, I just need you to know that I'm a Christian before we like start talking about, you know, like, right. I didn't need to say that. Trigger warning. <laughs> uh, yeah. I just, I, I needed to respect them and I needed to show them that I don't like the, like, I'm different, but maybe there was a difference. You know, maybe if I go in and I just do what I need to do and I do it at a high level um, and try my best maybe they'll see something different about me. Mm-hmm. And I would want them to ask questions. You know, yes. I'd want to yes. have a relationship exactly. with them right. enough to have them <clears throat> ask questions. So mm-hmm. I don't want it to just sound like scary, scary, scary. You know, I don't want no, to ever, good. I don't want my student or child to ever do that. Um, yeah. In the end, it was so formative to me. And, mm-hmm. it, and it really, it was like forming through the fire, mm-hmm. this person that I am now um, but again, that's why having those pillars formed mm-hmm. in the pre in the preface right. is so important because um, right. it is easy to get lost. But I do think it was so formative, and I really I appreciate that experience so much because mm-hmm. um, I, I really think that I was I was able to be in a space that's hard, yeah, but good, yeah, you know, yeah. It reminds as you're talking. I'm so glad to hear that, you know. And and, and by the way, I again to be fully intellectually honest, not every graduate of CCS would sit in that chair and say the exact same thing. Right. You know, because uh, different people respond to things in different ways. Mm-hmm. But, and, and I'm sorry that that's true, but, but if it is true, we can always learn and get better. Mm-hmm. And then secondly, some people just aren't in a space in that moment to actually hear everything right. that's being said. And that's okay because God's not done with them and, and he's going to find them as they go along through their lives. But it did remind me as you were talking that we do have a, we, another thing we talk about a lot here is we, we believe that Christians should have a seat at the table. Right. And in this world, and Kim, you could probably speak to this, just working with the legislature and everything, there are a lot of Christians who are involved in government. I know that's shocking to some of our listeners maybe, but there are a lot, and I know you know a lot of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in order to have a seat at the table today, you've got to be good at what you do. Mm-hmm. If you're not good at what you do, you are probably not going to have a seat at the table. And for us as a school, for us, gospel-centered education is not choosing between we're going to have this deep spirituality that's based on intellectual things and relational things and experiential things. And we're also going to, but, but we also want to have strong leadership abilities. 
And we also want to be really good at whatever it is God called us to do so that we can have a seat at the table. It's not either or. So I know, so Kim, maybe you can speak to that. We're about coming to our close here, but maybe you can speak a little bit to the necessity of, of having that perspective. I think um, <clears throat> as with anything in life, like knowing what is right and then um, being able to pick out mm -hmm. what is wrong mm -hmm. um, is so important instead of just staying in your own little bubble, yes. you Absolutely. know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And it just <clears throat> helps build your faith and mm -hmm. your testimony. And yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Just yeah, I would. Yeah, that you know, this idea of everything. I very much struggled and struggle with this idea of everything being black and white. Mm -hmm. It's either right or it's wrong. It's yes or it's no. And I think something maybe we can, um, as a school or high school or whatever maybe do better or just work on is those gray area questions like, do I get a zero on this? Mm -hmm. Do I not read mm -hmm. it? Cause I don't feel like mm -hmm. it's right because you run into those questions where <laughs> right. you can't say exactly. I mean, you could, but it's, it's more of a nuanced question. Mm -hmm. um, and so maybe talking about those things a little more about those kind of gray area questions where you really have to flesh it out and yes. decide, you know, what mm -hmm. that's going to look like. And from what I remember with that experience, I think I kind of looked over what I needed, read just enough mm -hmm. to do well. Mm -hmm. um, and then I moved on. But I said, yeah. I'm not reading that. I'm sorry. Yep. You know, but yep. I did just yep. I'm not reading the whole thing. I said that to myself. I'm not reading that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I just, I did just enough to get the a grade that was okay. And then yeah. I moved on. But again, it was, it was a hard question yes. and it didn't have an easy answer. So, yeah. so kind of those gray area questions, maybe mm -hmm. thinking a little more about what that would look like and prepping students for those questions that maybe mm -hmm. aren't as like black and white. Yeah. yeah. And that's one of the reasons we want to continue to have an intellectually rigorous program here. Cause we get questioned about that all the time. Mm -hmm. Can't we make things simpler, 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 simpler? Well, to some extent, yes, mm -hmm. we try to make it accessible, right? But at the end of the day, one of our pillars is we want to learn to think well. Right. Right. And write well and, and read well and speak well and lead well and image well and tech well. Mm -hmm. Because but it but it starts with being or it, it ends up starts and ends up with being able to think well. Mm -hmm. And that's what's in short supply, I think. Yeah, well I think what this is why what Kim's doing is so fabulous because having alumni be able to say what they've been through, you know, yes. and be able to say, I went there and, you know, I had this experience and now they can, can kind of, um, share their experience outside of school. Mm -hmm. Like I have and the kids who are here can be like, Oh wow. They're like, they were in my shoes and yeah. these are things that help them or, you know, whatever that looks like. Look, you guys, this has been a fabulous conversation. I've so enjoyed this and I, I I'm quite sure it will not be the last conversation we have with alumni here at CCS mm -hmm. because I, I think it's such a rich dialogue yeah. and it's very important. I think we learn from it and I think that's mm -hmm. really good as a school, but also we just want to be able to celebrate what God's doing in the alumni relations program and then with their alumni per se. So, so thank you so much guys for coming well, on today. You. We thank really you. appreciate it. Well, that'll do it for today. We're so grateful you took the time to tune in to the Gospel Centered Education Podcast. Please be sure to access it wherever you get your podcasts. Next week, we're going to actually have a part two on mental and emotional health with Anna Nelson, registered nurse. We're so looking forward to that option, that opportunity to catch back up with Anna. There was a lot that wasn't said in that first podcast that we want to get to. So thanks so much for listening, you guys. Also, a quick shout out to a friend in Kampala, Uganda, and we'll call him Brother Andrew. He's a head of school at a Christian school in Uganda, and I know that he's been listening to these podcasts. So Andrew, so glad to have you listening to it. I hope it's a help to you, brother. I really do. And in the meantime, until we see you guys next time, remember that Jesus is Lord. Take care, you guys. Thank you for listening to the Gospel-Centered Education Podcast, brought to you by Community Christian School in Tallahassee, Florida. You can find us online at myccs.org.